Today we are live from Wasangishu County, Eldoret, at the heart of it all. And this is where We Can Express is coming to you live from. Today, um, despite the sunny weather, we still have great company with me this morning. It's chilly, but you, these guys are going to make it a little bit better. Um, I'm about to introduce to you great people on the ground here in Wasangishu County who are choosing to make a difference. They are part of the Tumaini Innovation Center, and they have this great campaign called Jenga Vijana. So the Tumaini Innovation Center is a community-based organization right here in Eldoret that seeks to challenge or rather mm, that seeks to uniquely address challenges for vulnerable and youth in the streets of Eldoret. And then within that specific organization, they have the Jenga Vijana, which is a campaign that aims to raise funds targeting um, to design or to develop our residential and education training facilities right here. So they do that through the Jenga Vijana campaign, which seeks to equip and stigmatize street youth. Um, so far, they've raised about 400,000 Kenyan shillings, and um, they're going to tell us more about this and how it's working here on the ground. And like I told you, you have a great um, team with me here. So sitting closer to me is Kevin Yege, who is one of the beneficiaries. You get to hear from him straight from the horse's mouth about it. And um, sitting next to him is a beautiful Stacey Washuka, who is a student and also part of this um, Tumaini um, organization. And next to he her is Francis Waheme, yet another beneficiary. And all the way to my end is Samuel Kimanu, who is the director of Tumaini Innovation. Samuel, this is such a great cause that you have going on here in Wasangishu County. What inspired you to bring it up? So, um, you know, I was a, a teacher, a high school teacher, teaching uh -huh. at Testimony School. Right. And my cousin was on the street. And he had been supported by people to abandon street life, and he was doing well. I was teaching him, and we were almost age mates. We had lost so many years on the street. So he inspired me. He told me that it's possible to support street children and get them off to a point where they can be someone. Right now, he's a pharmacist and he works together with us. He's the coach at Tumaini mm -hmm. and works at MTRH as a pharmacist. So it's possible to get children off the street and they become people. It is possible. Yeah. I love that. So for you, Tumaini comes from a personal, and, and a pers it has a personal attachment for you. Exactly. You saw your cousin go through it, he overcame it, and now you're saying, let's multiply this solution and we will start with here at Eldoret. Exactly. And you know what is interesting with working with uh, the population is that you get to see someone like we were just joking with Kevin and Francis, <laughs> when you were and the, the pictures we took when the, we were starting and where they are right now. It's amazing the transformation, you can't believe. Actually, when you come to Tumaini and you see them, you say, no, these ones were not from the street. Wow, it's quite yeah, evident. Exactly. How long has, has, has um, the Innovation Center been there for? Um, so we started as a day center. Um, and then we realized our challenges with having a day center basically is a drop-in center where mm. kids come in and go back mm. to the streets in the evening. Mm. And we were placing kids back home and into their schools nearby. But a lot of them came back. And so because one, we were placing them to a situation they were still had run away from. Two, we were placing them in a situation where they were in a school that did not understand them. Mm. So for example, you're on the street and you stayed on the street for three years. When you go back to school, you go back to school when your friends have three years gone ahead of you. Right. And so when you, you go to a lower class, you're the tallest, and uh, some of them know you are from the street, they call you those names. Mm. So the school environment is not very conducive. Mm. And then because of being on the street, you get deviant behavior. Mm. So you become a problem to the teachers. Mm. And so that makes you again fall back. And there's the issue of stereotypes, because we've just yeah. touched on it, because then they become bullied uh, bullied in school, yeah. and the students um, don't understand that what they're doing is wrong, and, exactly. and it's so, not the fault that someone is three years behind. Yeah, and you know, the, 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 the schools have not been equipped, like we have been equipped to many psychologists, mm. with a social worker, to understand you. Mm. And so you find that the school is not conducive. Then the street becomes, you remember the food, the friends, so those three factors, mm. homes, the schools, and then being addicted to the street made a lot of the students we had placed Some come you, back. You run a fantastic organization, and, yeah. and I can't hear, wait to hear from the beneficiaries. Yeah, exactly. How do you keep the innovation center running? Um, we keep it in, uh, running because, one, the biggest thing is we consult, we partner with the uh -huh, population. Okay. We didn't do it by ourselves. So realizing that I had failed in the first attempt with the day center, I went back. And then they said, Tuntaka place to Naileweka. Oh, wow. We want hands-on training. Wow. That's why you had something about a hybrid education where mm. you can still do basic accelerated uh, 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 education, mm. which is basic primary school education. Mm. At the same time, you can do vocational training. Mm. And uh, that's one of the... Wow. I can, that has really stuck with me. Yeah. 
a lot of these two children just don't want to go to any place. Because if yeah. that was the case, we'd just build homes and put them inside there. Yeah. But they want to be understood. They want yeah. to go to places where they, underst- exactly. where they are understood. Mm-hmm. Kevin, tell me a little bit about your story. So, um, my story, I went to street in 207, uh-huh. the clashes. Oh, due to the clashes? Yeah. Okay. Nili toka naivasha, and then nika come LD with my parents. To come to Castile Doret, and then challenges will go home. Mm-hmm. I found Nika Kuja Street, I was a day scholar in Street, mm-hmm. Nilko Nakuja, Laf June in Enda Nyumbani. Mm-hmm. Nika Kua, the scholar for around from 2007 up to, to 2010. Mm-hmm. Nikiwa to do scholar that's three years, and then Nika Anza Saku Lala Tao, mm-hmm. Na Lala Leo Tao, Kesho Narudi Home. Kishukutu na lala tao, narudi home. But nilikuwa na kuja tao, basically, nikitafta do ya kupreka nyumbani. That time, sikuwa natumia drug yoyote. For three years, nikikaa pale. But since nikanza kulala tao, nikanza kutumia hizo drugs, nikanza kusnik, glue. Na hivyo ndo kakua, nikajipata tu, nimesaomba ka nyumbani sasa. Sienda ingi kuta, sikuji kutafta yoyote tao, napreka home. Mm-hmm. Na lala tao, sasa kabisa, nimezoya kama tao ka home. Siati, sikuwa napenda kusoma, mm-hmm. ama sinini, the chance that... I didn't have the chance to go to land. Mm. But somehow, to my name, I was in St. Luke opposite, town near MTRH. Upon the Ilkua, I was in the Ilkua, I was a day scholar. Well, I was in the school, actually. That day, I was in the school, 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 I was in the school. Your parents, because uh, you used to come to town to look for pocket money to go home with um, when you stopped coming home did your parents notice now alisa manini so i have a single parents my mother oh, okay so my mother the time that niliacha tu kwenda home nikaanza kulala tao madhangu alinitafuta because nilikuwa kama baba goyo boma i was like a provider in that family mm-hmm. so alikuja akanitafuta first of all alituma brother yangu mdogo so yo brother yangu akikamkunitafuta pia akajipata kwa tao Aka ingia pia street, aka mm. kuwa street. Sayi yako wapi, brother yako? So, sayi yako shule, ah. alirudi, shu, alirudi home, aka rudi shule. So, mini liona, kama brother yango mingia street, sipoa, mini likuwa nimeamua, lakini sasa itabidi nirudi home. Mm. Nika anza tena kurudi home, mm. nika rudisha brother yango kwanza home, mm-hmm. and then aka, aka hepa, aka toka hapa, mm. aka enda Nairobi. Mm. Hiyo time akikuja Nairobi, alikuja, aki nitafta pia mia house in street in Nairobi, mm. And then sasa ikabidi nirudi nyumbani. Mimi sikujua kwa Nairobi. Nikakuja nyumbani mama yangu akaniambia brother yako ameenda Nairobi kukutafuta. Mimi nilikuwa So wewe ulikuwa hapa brother yako alikuwa Nairobi. Yeah. How old were you at that time? Wakati huo nilikuwa 13 years. 13 years. And yeah. your brother who is younger was My brother was 10. Only 10. Yeah. So 10 years old in Nairobi, 13 years old you are here. And you said at that time you felt you were the man of the house because you grew up with only one parent which uh, who is your mom. Mm-hmm. Um kudos to her. Mm-hmm. Uh, your pressure, ni mob, yeah. the pressure of having to pro, pro, to provide for your family at 13 years old. Yeah, ni mob cause una take risk mingi. Wakati, eh, mm. cause kwa sababu hiyo wakati tulikuwa tunakota chuma, mm-hmm. unaenda unauza, unapata do, unakuja kwa tao, kwa street una beg everyone to give you some money for mm-hmm. food. Mm-hmm. So ilikuwa ni like ulikuwa unaonanga. But it was nothing. So when mtoi, ukipata mia unaona ni mingi. So the the thing nilikuwa nafanya, nilikuwa naomba mse na mwambia and big someone na mwambia ni baie tu unga. Mm. Ana ni baie unga nikishabaiyo huyo unga natumia hiyo unga kubeg mse mwingine anilie mboga mm. alafu napeleka nyumbani. So hivyo ndio ilikuwa. But ni pressure this time hata unafika ngeyo tao unatoka hivyo empty bila kupata chochote. Francis, you're another beneficiary. Now share your story with me. Ah. Uh, mimi nilikuja town nikiwa miaka 9. At 6 years old. 9. 9 years old. 9 years. 9 years old. Pro- kuanzia 209 eh yako 209 yeah. ulijipata kwa street aje ni kota yani venye kitambo mm. nilikuwa na nakaa na, naishi na mama peke yake siko najua baba alikuwa wapi mm. siko najua ma father kwa wapi tukakaa sasa mimi nikaachwa na mama tukapoteana tu watu wengi tukapoteana sasa mimi nikabaki town hata siko najua mama yangu ameenda wapi sasa mm. nikaishi town around 5 years that is 14 years. Mm-hmm. Then after hapo nikakuja nikajua mama yangu. Nikakuwa ndugu mkubwa. Ndiye akanionyesha mama hivyo. Lakini baba bado sikuwa namjua. Baka leo? Lakini saa saa like uh, 2015. Eh. Ndio nikajua baba. Eh. Na mimi maisha imekuwa ngumu sana town. Ulijuli 
how did you come across Samuel na Jenga Vijana? Ah, uh, tulikuwa hapo sent look opposite hapo. Eh. Hey. Mira sikuwa najua ni wapi. Mabe, marafiki tu wa town ndo aliniambia kuna mahali tunaenda tunakula tunacheza hivyo. Eh. Hey. Sasa mimi nitikuwa naenda huko lakini kuna vitu nafanya kazi ya mkono ya kushona like beats hmm. ya kushona kuna mkono. Hmm. Ya tuko na funzo hapo. Tunashona hizo vitu kama hizo eh tunaoga tunakula hmm. then tunarudi tao. Hmm. Francis hmm. what people may not know and, and someone was telling me and I was so in shock before we started is that you're in standard 8 right now? Yeah, I'm in standard 8. And you're also studying mechanics. Yes. How una balance hizo mbili aje? Mtu like, standard 8 na kwanza unafanya exams this year. Yes. Hata kama matiangi yametoka. <laughs> <laughs> unafanya standard 8 this year, alafu yeah. you're still doing um these other trainings. Yeah. That is fantastic. How unafanya how do you balance? Like from to, from 5. Eh. Uh-huh. I study mechanics. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Then later on in the day ni shule. Ni shule. Aha. Yeah. Okay. Stacy, this is such a fantastic um hashtag Jenga Vijana project. What are some of the challenges that you guys face when you're trying to rehabilitate street children and try to tell them this is not the end. There's an option and to my sense Okay, so into my innovation center uh, first of all, one of the major challenges is the facilities, mm. and that's why we came up with the Jenga Vijana campaign, mm. where we wanted the public to help us with Jenga Vijana. Wow. Because uh, the problem of the street youths, it's for everyone. It's here, yes. it's in Nairobi, it's in Nakuru. So we thought, let's, let's, let's let the community chip in, let them do something. We want also girls to come to Tumaini. Mm. Uh, we are really waiting for the girls to come to Tumaini and the boys also. And also with my course, I study civil and structural engineering. Mm-hmm. Uh, I teach them some of the modules in civil and structural engineering and coding. They'll, tra- they'll tell you about coding. it. Coding. They code and they are very smart. Kevin, you want to code? Yeah. So, we a code. So, the next Facebook in a come kutaka kwako. Sawa boss. Uh huh. Yeah. So, um, I can say the challenge uh, also with the fundraising yes. has been understanding how people give. Our aim for the Jenga Vijana campaign is supposed to be 5 million. And as you've heard, we are at 400,000. Yes. We've tried, uh, with the Jenga Vijana campaign, we've tried doing events. We had our first event called Twende Tumaini. Mm-hmm. It was a basic concert and f- uh, open day mm-hmm. where they come to Tumaini and they see what the boys do. Mm-hmm. They see their makerspace labs. Mm-hmm. They see their mechanics. They see their masonry. Mm-hmm. They see their classes. And uh, it raised some funds, but not Enough. as targeted. Yes. And now that we want to bring in more boys and more girls and the facilities have to be there especially for the girls Mm -hmm. and for the boys also Mm -hmm. so it's been a bit challenging on to understand how the fundraising from the people Mm -hmm. i like the fact that you say that street children is 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 not a government issue it's a societal issue it's me you uh, stacy somewhere all of us it's a problem that we have that it's our it's our problem Mm -hmm. as citizens that we've inherited and we ought to now um you know, face it full front. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have the stereotypes that street children are rude yeah. or, or, or I can't give them money because they will go use it um, for other things. How do we come across into breaking those stereotypes? Um, with the, Basically, they are humans. Yes. When they come to Tumaini, they might have those stereotypic might because they have to stay there on the streets alone, yeah. fend for themselves, yeah. and the people in the streets treat them with the same, uh, how do I call it, stereotypic view. view. Mm-hmm. So, yes, it is human for them to do that. But when they come to Tumaini, as I said, we have counselors, mm-hmm. we have psychologists, mm-hmm. and we get to talk to them. The thing they want to is to be listened to. Samuel, I want mm-hmm. you to add on to that mm-hmm. as well. Um, you see, the, 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 the challenge with giving a child money on the street is always that sometimes it can keep the child there. Uh-huh. But when you give... Oh, that wow. support mm. to an organization like us and other organizations across Kenya is that we create an environment which understands this child. So we have a school that does basic accelerated education and then there is the hands-on training. So that if a child does not really want to go to high school, 
Like Kevin had a big struggle at the beginning of this year to decide whether he wants to go to secondary school or do vocational training. Okay. And he made that decision. And the reason I really pushed him to go to secondary school because I really wanted him to replace me at Tumaini in the future. He keeps on saying that, that he wants to be the director in the future. And but so that comes with a lot of hard work, responsibilities yes. and education. Mm. But then Francis had decided that after class 8, he, maybe he'll decide later in the future, still this his decision, that he wants to... He's here. Let me yeah. ask you, Francis, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a mechanic. You want to be a mechanic? Yeah. You want to use that so oh. Kenyans can hear? I want to be a mechanic. A mechanic. Yeah. And you will be one of the best that this continent is yet to see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, you want to replace Samuel? Yeah, I want to replace him. So actually, um, I know mechanic, I know welding, I know electrical. Mm. I do both of them. Even, But I just want to be a manager when I grow up. So I'm doing basic education mm -hmm. to like, now I can do anything. I can go to a vocational school and learn anything I want. Mm. But basically, I want to be a manager. Good for you. And again, you also become one of the best managers this continent is yet to Thank see, you. right? Um, now, my question is that for Francis, uh, both Francis and Kevin, the street children who haven't yet um, come across um, Jenga Vijana or Moso to many centers, and there are more projects like that in different counties, um, how would you encourage them to know that, listen, Ukikuakwa streets, that's not the end of life. That's not the end of life. Don't give up. Find yourself as somewhere in society, as Stacey in society, that will help you grow. What, what would you tell them? How would you encourage them? How would you encourage yourself? So actually, every day I wake up in the morning, I say I'm afar from the mountain. I want to reach at the top of the mountain. Yes. So I would like to tell them that even me, I made it so everyone can make it. So you can change. The decision is yours, just making a choice. And it's not that they like to be in street. Actually, Francis how would you encourage another street child? I mean, Samuel, that five million, you have to reach it because you're doing an amazing project right here. Have you tried dealing with private partnership? How else would you want to see the government come in? Um, and then, actually, that's been the biggest challenge. To the local Eldoret people, and we, I must say thank you so much to the people of Eldoret, mm. they have given. You know, you meet someone on the street, Stacey, and together with other students from Moi, who are just going on the streets and telling people about Tumaini and Jenga Vijana, and they have been given cash. They have gone to the communities, knocking at people's biasharas, kwanyumba, and they have, they have been given support. Mm. But now the corporates has been a big challenge. On the private sector side. Yeah, the private sector. Because you go, for example, to a bank, and the bank tells you we are a regional branch. The decisions on CSR are based in Nairobi. Okay. So we can't make that decision. So write me a letter, write me a proposal, then we'll take it to Nairobi, then they'll make a decision. It's very bureaucratic. Very bureaucratic. And county government, what would you want to see? Um, how would you want the Wasingishu County to come in and help you? And even more so, just the national government, because this is this this is our problem as, an, as a yeah. nation. Yeah. So the Wasingishu County government has been very supportive. Okay. They have supported us to get funding from uh, Japan Embassy, and we have a, f a whole vocational training building now is under construction for welding mechanics and electrical and hairdressing so we thank you for uh, we thank them for that support and we hope the governor will come and commission it uh, around august when we start uh, we open it um, they have been very supportive in coming goodwill even the children department, uh, like uh, from the CCC, Mr. Yator, they have been really supportive of our course. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things is that maybe in their budgets in the future, 
they can budget for street children mm. and have I, a place where they can model. Yes. For example, I would like the Tumaini model to be modeled elsewhere. Because at Tumaini, you don't force them to, to go to at Lazima Uende Primary School. Yes. As long as you know how to read and write and you want to do vocational training, Karibu. Mm. As so, long as you meet the age requirements okay. and the standard requirements that the government requires for you to do vocational training, you're welcome to study. Samuel, do you think that, and I, and I, and I like that, that's fantastic. Within yeah. the budget, have a certain amount that is located for street families. Yeah. Do you think with this corruption that we're seeing in this nation, how will, how will genuine organizations who are doing fantastic work on the ground, people-oriented work, how, how, how will financing happen? I'm sure that's just such a big challenge, especially with the corruptions that we have in this nation. So for me, I've real, it's, maybe it's, corruption is almost, unfortunately, it's becoming almost like a culture in this country. Mm. But for my work, I've decided I'll, I'll create my own corruption-free mm. world within Tumaini. I go to the government, I say this is what I do, and get that. And when I create a corruption-free organization, then from there, when Francis opens his mechanic a garage and trains other kids, like uh, and, uh, and 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 Kevin becomes a manager, they also have that integrity. Integrity, them. not just vocational trainings. Yeah. The values. The values. So that the, if we create those values, right. uh, integrity, excellence, you just don't do mediocre job. Don't become that mechanic who will be out of it to Kwagari. Mm. Or don't become that manager who harasses people or siphons money mm. that was uh, supposed to be given to street children. Mm. That is a way, one way of me injecting that in integrity to other young people to mm. become good in the future. Stacey, what, 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 would, what would be your closing remark? Um, mine would be to the youths. Yeah. I tell them, let us support each other. Let's not wait for people from outside to come and help us. I like saying African problems, African solutions. Because for the Jenga Vijana campaign, it's only youths who have done it, especially students from Moi University. Beautiful. We've been working together. We've been organizing the events. We have an initiative called 2420, mm. where in 2420, we urge the students to give 20 bob twice a month for the, for the next of six months. Twice a month? For the rest. Uh -huh. twice, a, twice a week, uh -huh. every month, uh -huh. for six months. Okay. Yeah. It brings in a bit of cash to help support Jenga Vijana. Uh, just 20 bob. Just 20 bob. 20 bob is not hard to give, mm -hmm. and we usually call it mbao kwa mbao. And uh, we say, instead of going to the streets and, and the, the mbao you'd give to the, to the kid and, and uh, takula na malize, it is good we pull it together. So that it can bring more kids from the streets where they can have food, they can have education, they can have a place to sleep. All right, that is a fantastic closing remark. Kevin, Stacy, Francis, Samo, thank you so much for being here this morning and choosing Francis, to inspire Francis. Kenyans who are watching. Yeah, yeah. Now, you've had it. Guys, this is just a fantastic example of what happens as society if we decide to give and give selflessly, that we can do things beyond um, having to just look towards the government. And Jenga, um, the Tumaini Innovation Centre just here in Wasingishu County in Eldoret is just a clear example of how we young people have the power. And that is where we're going to close off We Can Express on such a positive note. Thank you so much for taking time this morning to choose KTN and be with us. We will be, this is where we close, but tomorrow morning the show will be happening here again live from Eldoret County. So I hope you join us for now. Zinzi Kibiku.